All right, let's jump into the first one here, which is all about user control and freedom. You're gonna to need to place your users in control of the user interface. So a tip within this section is creating an easy to navigate interface. This is really paramount to user control. You want to design an easy to use navigation structure and navigation should be clear and, and really should enc encourage exploration. You want your users to be able to find all these amazing tools that you're building for them. Now context is really the key to a good navigation system and how you provide users that context is from little UI of uh, visual cues. And this includes things like page and section titles, which are consistent and clear. Um, also things like you are here navigation indicators. This can be something like a highlighted tab or navigation item in a menu that lets users know what screen they're on um, in, in the context of the screens and pages around it in the information architecture. You could also include things in this bucket like global search or filtering controls. Uh, these provide, again, that, that control and sense of freedom for the user, and you're really providing them with tools that they need to control like what they're seeing next and, and what they need to find. So you're putting them in the driver's seat. And all of these cues within navigation kind of add up to that, that good user experience and, and comfortability with the application. And I know it can seem a little bit vague, so how can you kind of test or ensure that you're hitting the mark? How can you test that your navigation is intuitive? So there's this sort of quick and easy method, which is somewhat crudely known as the uh, trunk test that you can try out with your, with your designs. So the idea behind the quote unquote trunk test is that if you're sort of thrown in a trunk and driven around a city and then dropped off somewhere, you should be able to quickly look around your landscape and answer these four questions. You know, where am I? How did I get here? What can I do now that I'm here? Uh, and where can I go from here? So all of these things should be solvable or, or uh, provide you the context within your visual landscape uh, and surroundings to answer the questions. So you can try this out by grabbing some low level screens in sort of dusty corners of your application and run through these questions. And I'll walk through an example like I mentioned shortly with our demo. Another portion of putting users in control is this idea of making actions reversible. So in a perfect world, user actions are reversible and forgiving. So the user should be able to quickly backtrack whatever they're doing. This allows them to explore your application without that constant fear of failure. And, and when they know that errors might be able to be easily undone, it again encourages that exploration of unfamiliar areas. And on the contrary, if a user is being extremely careful with every action that they take, it leads to slower exploration and sort of a tense, stressful experience that doesn't help anybody in the end. So a solid example of these reversible actions are you know, undo and redo actions or prompts. So undo it lets users make changes and go back step by step through changes that were made. And redo obviously just, just the opposite, takes them forward through the stack of actions. So a real world example that you're seeing in this image is, is sort of Gmail's notification on their mobile app for when a user deletes a message. This may have happened by accident, so they always provide this banner as sort of an emergency exit to undo that action. And what it does is it allows somebody to potentially leave an unwanted state, no harm done, and they can continue going about their workflow. Additionally, you wanna be providing really informative feedback throughout your user interface. Feedback is usually associated with points of action. So for every action users are taking with the system, you wanna show a meaningful and clear reaction. And there's sort of two subsets of this where the responses can be slightly different. So one is a frequent action, which happens all the time throughout the application, for example, pressing a button uh, on mobile. So it's essential to provide some indication that that button has been pressed and acknowledged by the system. And that might be as simple as a changed press state, um, a hover state if you're on desktop, uh, or a focus state as they are pressing the button, things like that. So it's subtle, but it still lets them know that, hey, my, my button click or press was registered by the app and something is going to happen. And then the flip side of that is sort of infrequent or more significant actions where your response from the UI should be a lot more substantial. So for example, when filling out a password field in the signup form, a good UI might inform users of all the requirements for their password and whether they um, have successfully created a good password yet and can move forward in their flow. It's definitely louder visually in terms of UI and interaction design but because it doesn't happen often, it's kind of a welcome guiding principle and, and a guiding interaction pattern on the application. Okay, so that's the first principle, the user control and freedom. Now I'm gonna jump into a quick demo and show you how we've 
built these bits out using our perspective module. So this is our demo app that the sales engineering team has created. And first, I want to talk about that intuitive navigation. So I'm going to highlight a few ways that this application is intuitive navigationally. Uh, first and foremost, just the, the page titles, right? This grounds users, lets them know where they are. So yeah, you know, today's work, this is my homepage, my dashboard, it's clear. If I go over to other main sections of the application, I have that consistently placed page title. Now I know I'm on work orders, and same thing for assets. Additionally, we have global actions, which are always available in the top right here. And these are a good way to let the user know like what global actions they can take from any time. And what they are is important as well. So again, user control, we're giving folks a way to search the entire application to look for work orders or assets. So if I'm looking for, you know, fix, for example, hit enter there. I'm able to quickly get to, you know, where I need to go and have that freedom of control without having to muck through navigation and pages and scrolling if I, if I know exactly what I need. So that's a global action. Additionally, we have a global action for, you know, managing authentication states and high level like global settings such as theming. Additionally, we have navigationally, you know, consistent naming. So we're always calling work orders, work orders, always calling assets, assets. When we can, we're associating these icons with those words as well, so that it's always consistent throughout the application. And structurally, you'll notice we have, you know, consistency as well. So there's always sub subheaders, excuse me, above chunks of content. And they use consistent use of icons and spacing around them to have that sort of clear visual hierarchy. And finally, I want to talk about the navigation bar. Again, this is a global element. It's always available. And because we have this active kind of you are here UI state when I am in, within one of these sections, it's always clear, you know, if I walk away and come back or close the app and then come back, uh, you know, which section of the app I'm in just at a glance. And then let's circle back to our sort of trunk test we talked about for navigation. If we're looking at this screen, for example, can we answer those four questions? So where am I? Page title, I, I'm, on, I'm on the work orders page and this main nav is highlighted, making it clear. How did I get here? It, it's clear that this is a top level screen because the main navigation again reiterates that as well as the page title. Uh, what can I do here? So right away, I know that I have five work orders assigned to me and there's a clear primary action. So I'm able to create a new work order or you know, based on following mobile paradigms, it's clear that I can click on a work order and dive a level deeper into its details. And where can I go from here? Um, this, you know, in this example comes down to these other sections of the website from the main navigation. And then again, that kind of user control through search to go anywhere I need to within the application by just typing in a few words. So I think with the trunk test, we're doing pretty well. It feels pretty intuitive and the UI makes it clear to me right away how the application works. Okay, now I wanna talk about informative feedback. So I mentioned sort of two types of this, infrequent and frequent actions. So a frequent action in this use case might be just navigating around the app. Um, it's, it's hard to see in the emulator, but we do have you know, press states on these buttons that let, it, let us know that, let the user know, excuse me, that, that their actions have been registered and something's happening behind the scenes. Additionally, we have um, some subtle UI and UX interactions, like when I did type in that search and hit enter, you'll notice a loading state that lets me know that the system has registered that search and is doing something in the background looking for my results. And then I also wanted to highlight this uh, filters bar. So when we do click uh, the filters bar within the search, I can filter to just work orders or just assets or view all. Um, this remains visible as I'm searching. And uh, the, the blue color change within the filters icon in the search bar lets me know that a filter is applied and active and my results are being filtered. And for an infrequent action to show informative feedback to the user, uh, we have this idea of, and let me log in as the correct user, sorry about that. So we have this idea of inline validation. So if I'm creating a work order, Let's call it test. I'm the requester, the location is headquarters. Just put in some nothing, but if I go down to the completion date, and if I happen to set this to a date previous to today, I get that sort of loud interaction state in line on my form, 
lets me know that there is an error, it needs to be fixed, and the error message does a good job of explaining you know, what needs to be changed and what the solution or path out of this is. Additionally, I'm unable to actually create a work order when there is this error. So that disabled button for create gives me again informative feedback about how I can fix this mistake. All right, and speaking of search, I just wanted to highlight a few of these other search resources because I get personally asked about this a lot. You know, how can I accomplish search within Ignition? Um, so these are two Ignition Exchange resources that are available now, uh, projects from Flexware as well as our own sales engineering team. Uh, the links will be in the slides that will be shared out, but they both have these nice search UIs which filter maybe lists of items um, or zones in this case for our HVAC building demo product. And uh, yeah, just wanted to highlight the Ignition Exchange. And for those of you who aren't aware of it or don't know what it is, um, the Exchange is this repository where developers from Inductive Automation and the Ignition community as well can share Ignition resources, both publicly and privately, all for free. So it's really worth looking at because there's a lot of great assets that, in there. You know, case in point, this perspective HMI, HMI framework by Flexware and this building automation demo project went up fairly recently and is very, very neat. Great, great UI on that one. All right, another demo around reversible actions. So looking at user control, let's look at this implementation. So again, on this work orders details page, or details page, I'll click in. Um, if I were to update the status of my work order from active to maybe in progress, you get a confirmation dialog first. And then once I update the status, a nice inline banner, which is showing me that the status was updated, the system registered it. I think in this case, it presents for five or so seconds. Obviously that's up to you, but you see that undo action there. That can quickly undo, I press it, the, the state of the work order reverts back to what it was. So if I happen to update it to the wrong status, hit undo and you go back in time, no harm, no foul. 